1800 hundred hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan, the news read by Muhammad Zubair Khan. First, the headlines. Federal Cabinet has approved grant of 5 billion rupees for General Census 2022. The President says global community acknowledges Pakistan's stance on Islamophobia, Afghan refugees and positive role in promoting regional peace and stability. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have expressed confidence that their partnership in green initiatives will further strengthen bilateral relations. Pakistan has released 20 Indian fishermen and repatriated them through Wahka border on completion of their sentences. Kashmiris on both sides of the line of control and the world over will observe Indian Republic Day as Black Day tomorrow. North Korea once again fired two cruise missiles into sea off its east coast today. And now the news in detail. Minister for Information and Broadcasting Chaudhary Fawad Hussain says next general elections will be held on the basis of new census for which the cabinet today approved 5 billion rupees. He was briefing media regarding the scenes taken in the federal cabinet that met in Islamabad today with Prime Minister Imran Khan in the chair. The Minister for Information said that results of the pilot survey under the census 2022 will be revealed by the end of April or in the start of May, while the whole process will be completed till the end of this year. He said after getting these results, Election Commission will start delimitation of constituencies for next general elections. Chaudhary Fawad Hussain said the Cabinet was briefed on the spread of COVID-19 in the country. It was informed that despite a spike in corona cases, only 1.5% increase in hospitalization was recorded that shows our health system is not overburdened with this wave. The minister said Prime Minister Imran Khan has directed to devise a mechanism for provision of relief to overseas Pakistanis for their COVID-19 test that is compulsory before travelling abroad. He said in this regard a summary will be moved to ECC to devise a legal framework. Chaudhary Fawad Hussain said the cabinet was also briefed over the increase in imports and exports of the country. It was informed that Pakistan's machinery imports have risen by 35%, indicating the long-term expansion in textile and other export sectors. President Dr. Arif Alvi says the government is committed to provide conducive environment to the business community. He was talking to the representatives of the Sakha Chamber of Commerce and Industries and Business Community in Sakha today. During the meeting, the representatives of the chamber and business community presented various proposals pertaining to ease of doing business, establishment of dry port in Sakha, new bridge over Sakha Baraj, and other business-related matters. Earlier addressing a gathering of students at Cadet College Ghotki today, Dr. Arif Alvi said the global community acknowledges Pakistan's stance on Islamophobia, Afghan refugees, and positive role in promoting regional peace and stability. Senate was informed today that the country's foreign exchange reserves are touching $20 billion as a result of effective policies pursued by the government. During question hour, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Ali Muhammad Khan told the House that Pakistan's exports and growth rate are at record levels and the current account deficit is being reduced. Acknowledging the issue of inflation, he said efforts are afoot to control it in the next three to four months. He said the government has enhanced tax on import of luxury items under the Finance Supplementary Bill 2021. Responding to a supplementary question, the Minister of State said the government is investing in new varieties of cotton seeds in order to bolster its production. Highlighting the scope of e-commerce in the country, he said this will also be linked up with the special economic zones. He further said that the volume of e-commerce has increased by 115%. Later, the House was adjourned to meet again on Friday at 10.30 a.m. Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Faru Habib says the government's criminal law reforms are ready for legislation which will pave the way for provision of justice and rule of law in the country. In his tweets today, he said it is for the first time that influential people are being brought under the ambit of law regardless of NRO's blackmailing. Farooq Habib said the opposition, which corrupted the whole system, is the biggest obstacle in the way of supremacy of law. The Minister of State said the opposition's hue and cry over Transparency International's report is baseless. He said the report does not mention any corruption at the government level. Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa Governor Shah Farman says the province has huge investment potential, especially in tourism, minerals and energy sectors. 
talking to Ambassador of Switzerland to Pakistan, Benedict D. Shajat, in Peshawar today. The governor said Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is rich in natural resources, including olive, saffron and honey production. The Swiss ambassador expressed keen interest in investment and trade collaboration in these sectors for boosting bilateral trade. This is Radio Pakistan. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have expressed confidence that their partnership in green initiatives for a sustainable and healthy climate will further strengthen the bilateral relations. Addressing a news conference flanked by Chief Executive Officer of Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Environment, Dr. Khalid, in Islamabad today, Special Assistant on Climate Change Malik Amin Aslam said the bilateral partnership will usher in a new chapter in existing brotherly ties between the two countries. He said Pakistan's environmental and climate-oriented initiatives have been acknowledged internationally. Special Assistant on Climate Change said the United Nations has termed Pakistan Asia's forestry champion and a model for others to follow. Pakistan has released 20 Indian fishermen and repatriated them through Faga border. In a statement, Foreign Office said the fishermen who were arrested for entering the country's territorial waters have been released on completion of their sentences. Terming the issue of humanitarian nature, the Foreign Office said the government expects reciprocation of the same gesture from India. Kashmiris on both sides of the line of control and the world over will observe the Indian Republic Day as Black Day tomorrow. In protest against India's continued denial of right to self-determination to the Kashmiri people. According to Kashmir Media Service, call for the observance of the Black Day has been given by the illegally detained all parties Hurriyat Conference Chairman Masarat Alam Butt, Mirwais Umar Farooq, Shabir Ahmad Shah and Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front and supported by other Hurriyat leaders. The day will be marked by a complete strike in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and anti-India demonstrations and rallies in Azad Kashmir, Pakistan and world capitals. On the other hand, entire Kashmir Valley and parts of Jammu region have been converted into a military garrison by imposition of curfew-like restrictions in the name of security. North Korea once again fired two cruise missiles into the sea off its east coast today. The launch was North Korea's fifth of the year following tests of a tactical guided missile, two hypersonic missiles capable of high speed and maneuvering after liftoff, and a railway-borne missile system. World Health Organization's Chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has urged countries to work together to bring the acute phase of the pandemic to an end. Speaking at a press conference in Geneva, he warned that it is dangerous to assume that Omicron will be the last variant. He said pandemic has shown that the world must elevate protecting and promoting health as a top priority. And now the weather report. Mainly very cold and dry weather is likely to prevail in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. Dense fog is likely to prevail in Upper Sindh, plain areas of Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa during morning and night hours. And now once again the headlines. Federal Cabinet has approved grant of 5 billion rupees for General Census 2022. The President says global community acknowledges Pakistan's stance on Islamophobia, Afghan refugees and positive role in promoting regional peace and stability. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have expressed confidence that their partnership in green initiatives will further strengthen bilateral relations. Pakistan has released 20 Indian fishermen and repatriated them through Vaga border on completion of their sentences. Kashmiris on both sides of the line of control and the world over will observe Indian Republic Day as Black Day tomorrow. North Korea once again fired two cruise missiles into sea off its coast today. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analysis, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radiopakistannewsofficial.